Boy, can I help you? Listen up. I'm bringing you the best content to ever exist in the door-to-door -door industry from sales, leadership, recruiting, and personal development. Well, why would I need that? Because never before have we been able to collaborate with the top experts in their industries, sharing their secrets and techniques on what makes them the best. Wait, who, who are you? I'm your host, Sam Taggart, creator of the DDD Experts and DDD Con. Is there a place we can sit down? Well, come on in. Vanilla is the fastest way to increase your Google and Facebook reviews through text. With a 98% open rate, Vanilla Reviews is the simplest, cheapest way to interact and engage with customers. Visit us at vanillagood.com for more information. All right, I'm Sam Taggart, and this is the D2D Podcast. I'm here with Mike Brand, who's done this for over a decade. Ten and years. Technically, we're family. We're like second <laughs> cousins, once removed. And anyway, long story, blood related, definitely brothers. So Mike is the director of sales at Vivint Solar over all of the San Diego-ish area, right? Southern mm -hmm. California. Yep. SoCal goes from um, Visalia down to Chula Vista. Oh, Visalia is considered SoCal? Uh, well, my cousin works there. He's actually uh, okay. part of NorCal, no but I, I count it. Yeah. Count it. So over about 70-ish dudes, depending on the given day, right? Yeah, so within my band, there's like three offices that I personally work really close with that have about 70 sales reps in them. And then in Southern California, you probably have about 300. And you help train a lot of those, but you kind of have your own little band. Yeah, so we have three or four guys that run Southern California that collaborate and help cool. manage those three or 400 guys. And then I specifically work really closely with those three offices that we talked about earlier. That's oh. awesome. Yeah. So privileged to have you guys, you you on the podcast. I mean, obviously, we're sitting in here in San Diego in his house, actually. Impromptu we just, Easter we, podcast. Yeah, we, it is Easter <laughs> Sunday. We just got done playing Easter egg hunts, basketball, uh, had a great dinner, some ham, and uh, now I was like, let's freaking do a podcast. Why like, wouldn't we? This is podcast worthy. So let me let me ask, kind of, how did you get into the industry? You were in your early twenties, like, yep. what, what, like who recruited you? How'd you start? Sure. So I was delivering pizza oh. first and foremost. This is awesome. Pizza delivery stories. This yep. is my third one on a podcast. <laughs> third pizza hey, delivery. If you want to recruit a yeah, good guy, I was gonna go say, to a I'm round like, table pizza. I'm gonna say maybe we're... he's looking for a better opportunity. <laughs> yes. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. So I was delivering pizza. I did roofing for like six to twelve months. Um, and then one of my good friends from high school was out for the summer, in the middle of summer, selling security for APX. And he said, Mike, you, you'd kick ass this job. Come out. Come try it. And so I drove from Sacramento to San Jose. Um, actually went out, middle of summer, started knocking. First two days, I'm in flip-flops. Never knocked the door before because I saw the other guys in the office in flip-flops. And I'm like, hey, this looks fun. You know, you could do a job in flip-flops outside. <laughs> yeah obviously 12 get dropped off in hood yeah 12 hours straight each day nothing not even in a house oh, you know so just you get just my blank. just get whooped i know? love these stories okay good because mine was the opposite so i like the ones it's like guys for you that are sucking yep. getting your face kicked in hey there's hope that's part of it that for is sure part of it. So, so i i walked so long and so far i like get my back hurt you know i'm like 21 yeah. years old you know um anyways Next, the next Monday, that was a Friday, Saturday, the next Monday, get my first sale and it was like, you know, the best feeling in the world. And I realized like, wow, sales is amazing. I sell each of my next like five or six days. The office shuts down, moves to West <laughs> Virginia. I've been on the company a week, yeah. you know, and I'm making 400 bucks a sale. I'm like, I just made 2,400 bucks, you yeah. know, technically I only got paid 1,200 Yeah, and I actually went back and went back to Sacramento. I'm not moving to West Virginia with a bunch of guys I just met, you yeah. know? Um, I think Todd Peterson still owes me the back end for those six alarm accounts. <laughs> so I gotta, if anyone has his number, yeah. maybe shoot him a text. Yeah, tag him, be like, Todd, my is 1200 bucks. that's right. Tag him right now. Whatever, they can keep it. But yeah. uh, I went back, I actually started working for a monotronics dealer in okay. Sacramento, and that's where I really like sunk my teeth into door-to-door -door and selling security, and that was you know six to nine months of just grind. Um, and then a guy that I met originally in that APX office, um, is from Sacramento, which is where I went back to, to sell for Monotronics. And he heard that I was still selling and, um, he started recruiting me and got me back to come on that next summer in the summer of 2010, um, to actually start in the preseason. And my goal is to be the number one preseason rep. 
Um, the good news is no one sells preseason yeah, for APX. Yeah. I didn't know that. This was pre that. Yeah. yeah, and so I didn't know that. And so it was actually a good goal because I went out and sold every single day. Like probably never sold more than one a day. But I'm like getting my one every day. Ended up with 100 preseasons going into the summer. Um, had a, a mediocre summer, like a fine summer. I sold 100 or whatever and, and finished the year with 200 funded accounts. And so that was like my first full year, 2010 summer with APX. They switched to Vivint, I think that summer or early next summer. Um, it's also where I met my wife. That's um, awesome. Wasn't she, she selling? She was my manager. Yeah, she was slinging. Yep, best. She was the best manager to make out with by far. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> she was the best. Yeah, the other guys didn't even hold a candle. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's awesome. So anyway, so that, so that, that was my first summer. Um, went back, got married, um, sold security for two more years. At the end of the summer of 2012, I switched over to Vivint Solar, which at the time, well, there was four or five offices nationwide, so kind of right place, right time. Um, started out on the East Coast, um, opened up Vivint Solar's first New York market in early 2013. Um, that grew over you know two, three years. The solar industry was just booming, you know? So two, three years, we grew that to 10 offices, um, and then we got pregnant with number three and decided to move back to where we're from um, in the middle of 2016. Uh, so that brought us here to San Diego, and we've been out here for two and a half years now, almost three, coming up on three years selling solar in San Diego for Vent Solar. So it's, been a, awesome. it's been a fun ride. Ten years goes by. Quick. We were just jam- jamming. I mean, like I come over here, and I was like, when was the last time we saw each other? And it was like, like seven years ago. Seven years ago. <laughs> like, guys, ridiculous. if you listen to this podcast, Mike was the one recruiting me to go to Vivint. Like, <laughs> that is what's crazy. I'm like, pre me even showing up to Vivint. That's like, wow. Anyway, so let's kind of jam. So today I want to talk about really culture, uh, the thread. So if you're listening to this podcast or watching this, uh, today we're going to jam on kind of what keeps people motivated, yep. what keeps people consistent instead of having, you know, in sales, we call it like commission, you know, you're living commission to commission check versus paycheck to paycheck. Right. Uh, it's like you're li- living just deal to deal. And yep. I feel like a lot of times, especially in solar, roofing, kind of bigger ticket items where it's a slower sales cycle and you're making a bigger commission per deal, uh, a lot of people kind of end up in this complacent stage. Right. Yeah, I guess in anything, I had a big week, a big month, whatever. Um, and I think one thing that you guys have mastered and done really well, obviously running lots of teams, lots of sales guys, is just the culture of consistent performance and you know, just getting guys to go out and hustle. Like, I think that that would be a really cool topic. So let's kind of start with that. Yeah, and I think, I mean, how many times do you see a guy come in to any industry and just blow it out of the water for one quarter? And you're like, this guy is the next. Like, he is the the one, you know? And then the next quarter disappears. Like, just absolutely disappears off the face of the earth. And you're like, what happened to that guy? It happens all the time. And so that's, that's a constant struggle in this industry. And I think... So we were just talking about this topic um, recently, um, kind of as a director group, and one of the things that we really focus on is tying everything to a bigger vision. And so there, there's three things. Um, you have a bigger vision, and that's kind of like a two, three, four, five-year plan. You have your goals that fit into that vision, and then you have your daily habits. So you have vision, goals, habits. I think for a lot of guys, they start with their goal. Right. Yeah. They have, everyone has like a yearly goal. Like I want to, I want to make, yeah, I want to make this much a year <laughs> or I want to, you know, this quarter I'm starting out and I want to be the number one sales rep in the quarter and that's yeah. their goal. And the problem is if that goal isn't tied to something bigger, when you, when you reach that goal, then what? Yeah. Then you're, you're, you're back to feel like I accomplished what I set out to accomplish and you're complacent and that complacency it just, it sneaks up and all of a sudden it's, it's there. Right. Yeah. And so when we talk about vision, we talk about, okay, where do you want to be three years from now, four years from now, five years from now? Um, what do you want your life to look like? You know, how much money do you want saved? You know, do you want $3 million in your account um, earning you money? Do you want to own nine investment properties? Okay. And how long is that going to take? Well, then you break it back down. So, okay, if my vision is to have $3 million in the bank invested um, in equities and in real estate so that I don't have to work another day in my life and I want to do that in the next five years, then each year I need to live off a hundred grand, which means I need to save two hundred grand or so on and so forth yes. to hit my goal, right? And so then you break down what where you want to end up 
you break down your yearly goal on what, what you need to hit financially. And then to, to dial it in and stay focused day to day, week to week, month to month. Yeah. It's like, okay, I have my yearly goal. Now, what's my quarterly goal? You know, tied to my yearly goal, obviously. And then my weekly rhythm. Right? My weekly rhythm. So now I, like I have that. my weekly rhythm, right? Because we're talking, you're going to do something year round. We're yeah. talking about to, to the roofing guys and yeah. to all the, all the, the guys that are year round. round year right. Round solar. Yeah. What's my weekly rhythm? You have to know that number. Okay. So my weekly rhythm, I need to close five solar deals every week. That's my weekly rhythm. I need to do that every single week. And I factor in like two weeks of the quarter I'm going to be off yep. for whatever reason. I have a family thing or we're going on a, on a vacation or whatever it is. So yeah. like I do it off an 11 week quarter or whatever. So I need to hit five closed deals. Now you break it down and you're like, okay, day to day, what are my habits that I need every day? to hit my five deals. So for me personally, I need to wake up at 5.30 a.m. Okay, I need to read my scriptures. I need to work out. I need to eat a healthy breakfast. Those are like my first, my daily habits. And then I'm on the doors from 1 p.m. to 8, 8.30 p.m. every day, consistently 9 to 4 on Saturday, right? And so I have my weekly, um, my weekly habits, my daily habits. Um, and then you have to use tools to manage yourself. So the tools that I use, there's an app called Streaks, Streaks. Streaks. I think it's like four bucks or whatever. But you can basically track your daily habits. And every day you wake up at 5.30, you mark it complete. And then you can look back the last 30 days and see how consistent you've been. And so that kind of... Have you ever followed the guy on Instagram, Charlie? Uh Uh-uh. He's like, I'm on a winning streak. And that's that's like his whole thing. He's like, I'm on a winning streak. And, you know, I think he lost like 200 pounds or something like that. But it was about... It was all about what's your streak. So I like this. There's an app that actually... Gamify it gamifies it so does it graph it out and shows Mm -hmm. you okay you've consistently hit this one and you can track different habits yep that is so cool you can track up to 12 habits um and then the other tool that i use personally is every sunday night my wife and i'll sit down and we'll plan the week hey like some weeks are different like i have three kids under six and so yeah i want to be consistently one to eight thirty on the doors every day but real life stuff happens you know real life things come up and i need like my family's first yeah. But if I if I'm gonna miss four hours out of my one of my Thursdays, I'm gonna make up for that four hours somewhere else on a Friday morning. Yeah, I'm just gonna figure it out, right? Mm-hmm. But every week, because um, I want to be in harmony with my wife on our goals, and so I what I found is if if I do that, um, then there's less friction in our marriage, um, and so it's just it's a it's a habit where every Sunday night we'll sit down, we'll plan the week, we'll go through everything, and then my week like tonight when we finish this podcast, I'll take 20 minutes with my wife. And I'll know where I'll be every minute of every day for the next seven days. That's and now awesome. I don't have to think about it. That's awesome. All right. So let's hypothetically say you kind of get in the habit of coming up with other things that get in your way. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? So sure. this, is, this is the common thing that happens with reps, right? right. They, they, they always have something that comes up. So then they're never catching up on that four hours that you mm-hmm. took off. Right. And those four hours pile up to where it's just like, ah, oh, yeah, I only really worked. 20 hours this week and that's the habit right. what would you tell that guy so that's interesting it's it's funny because a habit whether it's good or bad the longer you've you've done that habit the harder it is to break and so if every day you take a long lunch and get out at 3 p.m or you like sit in your car and like manage your accounts or quote unquote manage your customers you know yeah. and delay knocking until 3 p.m if you do that two days three days four days five days ten days the longer you do that, the harder it is to break that habit, right? Yeah. And so I think the first thing is to recognize it. So you have to do some self-reflecting and at the end of the week be like, hey, was I efficient with my time? Okay, this came up at 4 p.m. And instead of like sticking with my plan, I went and like met up with my girlfriend or whatever. You know, I went and caught a movie. I don't know. Yeah, did whatever. I don't know exactly. what guys do. No, no, but, that, but that, it's, it's a million things, I swear. It's, I've watched so many reps over the last few years and it's like what like you drove what to do what like right. pick your kid up for an oil change to then sit with him you know right. and you're just like come on like figure out a solution it just it has to be non-negotiable right yeah. so it has to be if if i plan so if i and i get fired up about this because if you plan your week at the beginning of the week just do what you say you're gonna do just decide to be the type of person that that does what you say you're gonna do no matter what yes. right just be that person um, and then when those things come up, you just have to have the discipline to say, no, 
Like I like the reason I'm doing this is in five years, I'll never have to work again. Like if I do this the right way, my vision is in five years, 37 years old, I'm retired. I never have to work another day in my life. And so I might have to be a little bit uncomfortable. Yes. And I think that's one thing guys struggle with. It's like, they're so, they're so worried or scared to be uncomfortable. Sometimes it's hard to do what you say you were going to do because on Sunday night, you're like so strong. You're yes. like, I, I'm, you're reviewing your goal and your vision. You're like, yes, I'm going to yes. make a million dollars this year. I'm going to hit a lot X, of, Y, and Z. And I think a lot of people are good at that step. I think there's quite a few mm-hmm. of us that are like, yeah, I do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, I, that part's easy, yeah, that Mike. Part, I, got I got that. I, got I, can, that. I can plan it out. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I think when it comes down to it, it's just, you have to take pride in being the type of person that does hard things and is okay being uncomfortable. I like Because once you, once you flip that switch... And you're like, oh, great. Like, I'm facing some adversity right now. This is the type of person I want to be. Like, I'm going to overcome this adversity. Like, this, then you view adversity and you view challenges as an opportunity. Yeah. You just view it differently. You're like, this is hard. Great. Like, this is the type of person I, like, want to be is I overcome hard things and I overcome obstacles and I overcome challenges. And so I'm grateful for that. So I it's like just that. a mind, it's a mindset. It's a, you flip the switch on how you look at those challenges, you know? I love that. So what about like leading, uh, uh, teams, you know, you're sure. managing sure. all these teams, you run your own team within this group. Um, is there any like consistency? Cause there's also leaders that have these ebbs and flows. It's yep. like, I'm really fired up to go train all my guys and get in the field with them. And I'm, I'm running like, what would you tell leadership to kind of keep a consistent, habit any best practices tools training that you would want to give that leader owner that guy leading a team sure um i think so one thing recently we had a conference where we got to listen to jesse itzler plug trying (laughs) to get him for ddd con so if anyone listens to this hey if sam gets itzler for ddd con and you don't go you're yeah. crazy. I am trying to get him right now. So January, we actually just got the dates too. Yes. It's the third weekend in January. So anyway, there's my, if you know him, I'm trying to like, I'm <laughs> manifesting that, that. I'm putting that in the universe. Get him. He is on my top five and his wife. Let's get them both. So here, here's the point I'm making with, yes. with leadership. And if you're running an office or you're an owner of a company or whatever, don't get complacent in, in being motivated and learning yourself and leveling up. Like in other words, don't be, don't think that you got it all figured out because that's what leads to complacency and leads to kind of that, that ebb, Mm -hmm. you know? But if you're constantly trying to learn new things and think of new ways to motivate your team and you're asking yourself questions and this is from Itzler, you know, how, if no one told me how to do this job right now, how would I do it? How would I motivate my team? Because that's where creativity comes from. And if you're, if you're being creative and you're thinking outside the box and you're like excited to learn and grow personally, that energy will just go to your team. Like they will feel that from I you. Like that. And when you come with new ideas into the correlation meeting, again, people are going to feel that. And if you're going with the same thing you've gone with every week, the last 26 weeks, like try to run an office for four years. And not learn anything new. Like yeah, your guys will hate you. They're just like, yep, here he goes hey, again. Hey, this is that, it, man. That story the of the five bike. levels yeah. of leadership. Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> Repeat. It's been about 12 weeks. He's going to start on this one again. The law of half, <laughs> law yeah. of double, or whatever it is. You know, we all, we all have those trainings that we go back to and they're good. But I think um, to stave off complacency and to continue to, to grow and to be excited, you have to learn. You know, and constantly be, be learning like... I, I don't feel like I know anything. Like I feel like I barely scratched the surface on leadership, on sales. And so I'm constantly just asking questions and looking for material and, and trying to, to, to learn, you know? Yeah, and I think a lot of leaders, they feel like because they got the title manager, CEO, regional, whatever that is, that's like where they got it made. Right, right. I'm like, no, no, no. That's where you just became the idiot. Hey. And that's where it's time to start really having to dive into learning. You're never there. You're never there because... I've watched some of the greatest leaders get complacent in their learning and all of a sudden it's that speed of the leader, speed of the team and everybody just passes them up or they feel like he's not really giving me much anymore. And then your culture suffers from that you slowing down as that leader. So what are, what are some tools? Is there any like 
best practices or, or weekly kind of things that you do? Like how often do you meet as a team? Do you run like sales meetings? Sure. Or how often do you do that? What do you do? So, so what we do is we run sales meetings twice a week. We run yeah. Tuesday, Thursday. Um, and is there so, a reason those days? I mean, if you kind of calculate it, I'm sure you've trialed and aired different yeah. days. Like We used to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it was okay. a lot for guys. Um, I think guys, especially in sales, like autonomy, and they like to have really big Mondays. Guys like to get out early on Mondays. And so just for our team personally, I think every team's different. Um Guys get out early on Monday typically and like have big Mondays. And then Tuesday we recap last week and kind of um, keep everyone motivated going to the middle of the week. And then Friday or excuse me, Thursday, um, get everyone remotivated to go through the weekend or whatever. Uh, so it just kind of splits up the week. It's not too much. Um, we're still getting in front of guys enough. Um, and then recently what we've been doing is every other Thursday going into like spring and summer in San Diego, we'll just go do something fun. Okay. So like every fourth meeting or whatever, like last Thursday we were at a beach and oh, we just so went and hung just, out as a team. Your meeting was more culturally connecting instead of like businessy. Right. Okay. I, I think when you run a year round program, it's important too. It's like guys want to feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves and feel connected um, to the team because they're not just doing this for three or four months. Like these are the people that like are in their lives. Like this, this well, is take it tonight. I mean, we went to a park. We had an Easter egg hunt, and you had. What six, seven of your team members there, yeah, and, and their wives, and their wives and, kids, and kids, and their, you know, you made it like, and you and Tammy probably organized that. You're like, hey, let's do some thing, right? Some some kind of activity. Yeah, and it has to be sincere, right? Like, in other words, that wasn't like a team building thing. It's like, hey, we we have a good culture because we want to work around people that we like, and so we've built a team um, that um, of guys that we really like. Um, and want to be friends with and so it's always it's just really sincere and like we w we like those people like we want to hang out with those people you know so it's not forced yeah so that's nothing if you're building a team look for people that obviously work hard and have integrity but look for people that you want to be around like it's your life you know and and i think if you hire people that you really like you'll put more time and energy and effort into helping those people succeed than if you're just like, oh, I give this guy a shot. Because I think that happens a lot in door to door. 100%. So yeah, if you're if you're ever saying at the end of an interview, like, eh, like, let's give this guy a shot, like just do him a favor and don't hire him. Because you're not you're not gonna help that guy. Yeah. You just won't. You won't you're do not what gonna, it takes. You're not gonna do what it takes as the leader right. to help that guy. You're doing him a disservice. And find a reason to like people. Like yeah. everyone has qualities that are really likable. Um, I really believe that and, and find those qualities and, and make a connection with the people that you work with and love the people you work with and serve the people you work with. You yeah, know? I think I think a lot of people they don't view it as that family right. team environment. Right. They're asking for a culture, they're asking for this camaraderie. Yep. Yet they're not willing to actually like right. get real with those people and, and, and make it genuine. You know, they're like, I'm the boss. I want to hire a bunch of canvas. I hear this all the time. I want to hire a bunch of canvassers. <laughs> You're going to make me a bunch of money. Yep. And I'm going to sit on my throne and I'm going to crack the whip. Like, doesn't it, work. It just doesn't work. I mean, I say it kind of like that. But it, but in the reality is it's like that's where a lot of people think I'm going to build this door-to-door -door program. I have this door-to-door -door sales team. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to recruit so then I don't have to do anything so I can like – let them be in the trenches. It's right. like, you know, in, in, instead of like, no, I'm going to hire all my buddies to do this with me. Right. You know, instead of going on Craigslist or, you know, like finding some dude out of jail to come knock doors. <laughs> right. it, it's like, no, you're hiring talented people that you would have hung out with had right. they been part of the job or not. You know what I mean? And anyway, I think that's super good advice. Yeah, so. I think you hit the nail on the head too. If you're ever saying or thinking, okay, like once I hire this many people, I can stop doing the work. It's just the wrong mentality. Like no one respects someone that isn't willing to do the work and like be in the trenches, especially in door to door. If you want to run a successful team, if you want to run a top team in the industry, you have to be with very few exceptions, um, the hardest worker in the room. You have to outwork everyone and show them how to do it. No one wants to be told how to do it. So th this is interesting. Guys, if you're listening to this, I think people don't fathom you know, off camera, we're, j we're jamming, and you just said it. My goal is to sell five every week. That was the first thing you said. Right. It wasn't, my goal is to get my guys to sell five each every week. It was, my goal is to sell five every week. I managed 70 dudes directly on me. I helped 300 people. I've done this since 2009. I, you know what I mean? I'm, but at the same time, you're also one of the few that's saying, oh yeah, I'm going to retire 
healthily at the age of 37. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's the, there's the two combos that can go together. Where everybody's like, I'm going to retire when I'm 35, yet they don't want to do the work. Right. You're saying, I'm going to throw down five every week with my people, lead them from the front, and get there and do it with them and show them. Like, it was so funny. So I'm out here visiting a, a buddy of mine who's under you and works with you. And he's like, dude, Mike took me out through three in, in a day. And I was like, holy crap. Like, just teach me how to do that. <laughs> but it's like, but you're sitting there as the, you know, this district manager, you know, this, this training guy that's like so high up in the company, been there forever since, you know, one of the OGs in this massive, the largest solar residential in the country. And... Yet you're still taking the new guy out and showing him how to do three in a day. Got to do it. And uh, uh, this is the point. You can't substitute that. And everybody's can't. like, well, is it broken? Like, there's got to be another way. I'm like, there's no shortcut, man. There's no shortcut. If you're, if you're looking for shortcuts or you're looking for the easiest way to make more money, there's just no easy, there's no secret. There's no easy way, you know? Go talk to a ton of people every day and learn how to sell. Like, and, and do it as hard and as long as you can. Right, yeah. it's like there, there's no secret sauce to it. I'm actually not a good salesman. I'm I'm really not. In he's everything. one of the best people. He's very humble. <laughs> he's very. He's one of what your best year in alarms. You did what three fifty something like that. It's probably around there. Yeah. Yeah, like guys, he's really good. Solar. You, what was your best month or week or? Um, that's a good question. Best quarter, I installed fifty three or something like that. Yeah, in a quarter, no so, big deal. I don't know. Twenty about something month. in a week, right? Yeah. <laughs> no big deal, people. But I mean, that's the thing. It's like people don't. You're really good at sales, so learn how to sell. Right? Sure. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people try to shortcut that. Right. Yeah. You, well, you have to. Yeah, of course. And what I meant by that, um, just to be clear, is that I didn't invent anything. In other words, everything that I do on the doors or in the house, I learned from someone who's better than me. And so, if I have one piece of advice for like guys in the industry or in door to door in sales at all, is reach up. There's someone doing what you want to do right now. There's someone doing what you want to do right now. Go seek that person out. And the craziest thing is the people that are most successful, they're the most willing to help. It's like the guy that's like moderately successful, like doesn't have time for you. But the guy that's like ultra successful, he usually got there because he had a mentor. And so when you go to that person, you're like, hey, I'm super hungry. I want to learn exactly what you do. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Like you're the best. I want to figure it out from you. Nine times out of ten, that guy will be like, yeah, I'll help you. Come shadow me yeah. or come watch me. In any industry, any industry, but a lot of times we won't call that guy or make that call because we're like, oh, he's too busy. He's, he's too busy. But guess what? The guys that call me, cold call me, they get my time because I, I know they're serious. I know that they're like willing to put in the work and they're not scared to like go do it. Yeah. You know? so. No, that's a good principle. That's way good advice. I like that. Write that down, people. If you're listening to this, write that down. Like. It, and that's another thing, Itzler, you know, we just came from that conference that's fresh in my mind, but yeah. he said his MO, like he, he would cold call CEOs. Like in, when he was building his private jet company, he would pick up the phone and just cold call people. And he just wasn't afraid to fail and wasn't afraid to like get out of his comfort zone, you know? So I think it's important. That's awesome. So what about like act, uh, meeting structures? Like when you run your Tuesday meeting, I'm curious, like how to, how to motivate, how to, how to get guys excited? I mean, this job sucks sometimes, right? There's sure. like, it's monotonous sometimes. It's kind of up and down. Like, what do you do in your meeting to get things organized, structured, motivated? Is there anything that you've recommended, like you've learned over running four years of dumb, boring meeting? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> running, well, like, it's crazy, right? Because yeah, there's yeah. only so much you can do. Exactly. I'm curious, like, have you kind of mastered or figured out, like, best practices? I mean, obviously, you've ran a lot of meetings. I'm just wondering, it's like, dude, yeah. when we do this or when we've done this or... I love this. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think there's a structure and then there's something that's outside of the meeting that keeps guys motivated and having fun. So I think the structure of the meeting is this. You're, you're going to review numbers for accountability. How do you review numbers when you just do it twice a week? So you're going to do it in a fun way. So what we do is on our Tuesday meetings, we go through numbers for last week. So how many how many accounts you created, how many deals you closed, and then we just do claps, right? So just keep it like upbeat and cool. fast and quick and like so guys guys read day? off their own numbers Are you asking per day? we say hey last week what'd All you finish week. with okay right? what'd you finish with mm -hmm. and so we go through numbers and then what we do is we have a guy in our office his role is to go through recognition for last week and update on where people are at for the quarter and we just like give a ton of recognition 
Okay. Like guys, they love rec- they everyone love loves to be recognized. Yeah. Obviously, okay. You know, instead of like criticizing people, we never like bring people down. Especially, never, ever, ever, ever bring someone down in front of everyone else. Like if you have criticism, do it one on one, and when you have praise, do it in front of everyone. So okay. that's like a really simple pr- principle if you're leading a team. Um, so we go through numbers, recognition. Then we all always. Yeah, what do you? I, I, let's talk about that. Because I've heard both sides of this whole uh-huh. criticism. Not necessarily criticism. Let's say I didn't sell last week. Sure. What happens? You still have to say it's zero. So, you so just there is accountability. So it's, it's like, like, Sam, what would you finish last week? Zero. Zero. And then next the, guy. Next guy. Just, that's enough. That's enough. Yeah, okay. that hurts enough. And then we're going to meet with you after the meeting too, right? If okay. you like didn't sell for a week, you probably didn't work. Let's figure out. Let's meet for 10 minutes after the meeting with those guys and like get them dialed back in and figure out what's going what's going on okay you know have and that's kind of like okay when we're talking about meetings and running a team you have to have a personal relationship with your guys yeah all right so the way that we break it down not to get off topic is we break our team down into squads so if you we run a team in san diego of about 35 to 40 guys okay right now we're probably at about 35 one person it's impossible to so run a team effectively of 35 guys. It's not possible. There's not enough time in a day. It's like the SEAL Team 6 type thing. It's exactly Pods. It. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we break it up into pods. So you have guys that are leaders. We have uh, two or three district managers in our office. And then we have squad leaders, squad that, leaders. that run squads. That. Right? And do they get paid or um, anything? Or yeah. is that just a responsibility? Sure. There's there's compensation for that um, depending if they hit certain personal metrics. And we won't get into like the okay. actual yeah, I was just breakdown curious, of that. But there, there is... Because some companies or some teams, I've seen it, where they don't even get paid. It's just like, you're developing yourself as a leader. So I don't even think you necessarily have to pay all the time for those that are listening. Like I just think there has to be some kind of like incentive, but at the same time, it's, I, it's I a actually, role. What I would say is this. If I were just starting, and I was in the solo industry six to 12 months, and my manager gave me the responsibility to run a squad, I would do it for no pay and I'd be happy about it because number one, I'm learning to become a leader. Exactly. Number two, I'm going to run the best dang squad in on my team and I'm going to act as if, so I'm going to act as if I'm, yes. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a leader and I'm a district manager because guess what? When the next spot opens up, I'm going to be the clear choice. And so I think guys sell themselves short when they're like, ah, no, never mind. I'm not going to get compensated. Like I'm not interested in helping out or doing more. Yeah. Like you want to be the guy that always adds more value than you take. And and that's the guys that win. That's the guys always. that move up in the space. That's the guys that recruit. Those are the guys that's like, oh, can I leave my current manager to come work with you? It's like, why? Because that current manager is not that guy. Right. Right. So, Two cents. Write that one down. Add more value than you than you than you take, right? So just going back to kind of the the, the meeting structure or whatever. So you got yeah. numbers, recognition, then we always have a dialed in sales training. So someone that was told two or three days before to prepare a sales training, like keynote or like a really solid structure, like it's well repaired and well well prepared and well run. And then we just end with a motivation. We'll usually pick a guy that has been hot like the last yeah. week or whatever and who's really feeling it and assign like a topic to him maybe say hey talk about your experience you know you really struggled the first three months but now you've really picked it up like talk about that a little bit or hey you've been in the industry five years and this is like your best quarter or you're you're feeling it like talk about that and so we just we try to keep those unique where it's not just like play a a youtube video video. you know what i mean like let's keep them keep them unique and keep them fresh um and so we just do that twice a week i think and just to go back to what we talked about earlier I think the most important thing is is have a personal relationship with your guys and make sure that they have a really clear vision of where they're heading. If you don't know what you're trying to accomplish in the next three to five years with this job, you will get dragged down by the day-to-day emotions of this job. Yeah, it's hard. But if you have a long-term three to five-year plan and you've broken it down by year, quarter, your weekly rhythm, and then you have habits to go along with that, I think that's what really drives guys, You know, just having that vision. I so. love that. Do you, on Thursdays, uh-huh. is it any different than Tuesdays or is it just kind of the same? I mean, like you said, every other Thursday or every mm-hmm. once in a while you take, do an activity, but like numbers or recognition, do you have any like clubs? I know like Vivint Solar has that, the league sure. or are there any other like hat clubs or I know we've done different things yeah, like yeah. that. Do you have anything like that that's kind of unique? So, I mean, that's one nice thing about working for Vivint Solar is obviously they've been doing door to door for a long time and so on the corporate marketing side they have all the competitions throughout the year 
Um, they kind of have the culture of like how you level up within the company already set up. And so we're able to use that structure. So the league essentially is just every seven permits you hit in a quarter. So seven, 14, 21 um, for, you know, solar permits, you level up, you earn different swag and different gear, you get recognized. And then um, four or five times a year, Vivint runs a different competition. Um, and that's something that we, every meeting, if there's a competition we're go- going, we're talking about that. You know, they do a one-on-one competition. They do a four versus four. They do a team versus team, like nationwide competition. And so almost always there's some competition going on. Yeah. Um, and then we'll do, you know, the, the standard thing is every Saturday we have like sales incentives, like just within our office and things like that. But um, the sales marketing team does such a good job that we don't do a ton of it just like as a team because it's so company centric. I love know? that. And and that is something that a lot of people, if you're in Vivint, you should appreciate probably more. If you're not, like figure out ways to do that in your own way. You right. know what I mean? If you're a five man solar company, it's like how do you how do you come up with a competition right. that's inciting, that's that's mm-hmm. different, unique, creative. It gets people excited to, to pin them up against each other. Um, you know, I think a lot of people, they, they're just like, yeah, yeah, go out, go out this week, guys. Good luck. And like, See you next week. You know what I mean? Right. Like, well, what motivates salespeople, right? It's like short-term pops, right? Yeah. Like the reason we're in sales, a lot of us, is like we're very like ADD and can like focus for a little bit. Yeah. So whenever I see guys like rolling out quarter-long incentives or even like multiple weeks for incentives, I'm like, dude. It doesn't work. You know, like, give me a three-day incentive. Like, Thursday through Saturday this week, this is what we're going to do. Um, and then have those quick pops every week and keep it fun and exciting. And then, yeah, be creative. Like, pit guys against each other. Make it fun and competitive. Um, and, you know, you have to come up with... If you're, like, a smaller company, you don't have that sales marketing team, like, doing that for you, you have to have some type of competition. Yes. That makes it fun for guys. When it's fun for guys... They stop thinking about work and they're like just in their own world out there competing and knocking doors till 930 because it's fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like if yes. you're, you're not going to knock doors till 930 p.m. because you want to make money. Yeah. You just want you'll, you hit a point where it's like I want to go home and be with my family or whatever, you know. But it's like if you're trying to beat the guy next to you and you know you need one more sale and you get it, you're on top of the world. And you go home that night, and it's like not only did you make more yes. money, but you like loved your job. You're like, yeah, I can't believe it. I just want a fifty-six inch TV. You yeah, know? and, and I think and I think a lot of leaders they need to embody that more. You know yeah. what I mean? I think they need to recognize like, as a leader, your people are itching for that. Right. You have to be the one that gives it to them. They want it. They want it. And I think sometimes people get lazy, or they feel like, they, oh, I got so many hats I got to wear. I got to like. But make that a priority, right. like, and you'll see numbers go up. Right. You just will. Um, okay, so we got to wrap up. But one one last question, and honestly, thanks, Mike, for doing this. I know this, this is, is like Easter Sunday. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, you want to do a podcast? <laughs> anyway, super ad lib. I love it. Uh, um, no, but definitely podcast worthy. If anything, like, there's a lot of people that shouldn't be on this podcast in comparison to you. So one one question I ask everybody. Uh, at the end is what what's one piece of advice in a nutshell that you'd give the door to door industry if you give them like one piece of advice it would be about anything what would you give them be all in I think and I I'm specifically talking to people that are in their first three to six months yeah and there's so many people that come in to the door to door industry and they don't commit they're not all in and so my piece of advice for everyone that starts like within our region is set a date 12 months from when you start. Give yourself 12 full months before you even pull your head up. And when you do that, when you really commit like 100%, like I'm going to do this for 365 days as hard as I can, when you come to those challenges or those obstacles, instead of making excuses, um, instead of looking at your backup plan, your brain, its only focus is finding solutions yeah. and finding a way. And like our brains are amazingly powerful tools that we underutilize because of our lack of commitment. Mm-hmm. And if you, the reason I've never left Vivint and I never will leave is it actually doesn't even matter the company. Where, wherever you are, just if you're 100% in, 
your mentality is different. Yeah, it's not like you're always looking over your shoulder saying, what's right? What's you're not my distracting. easy way out of this? Mm-hmm. And I think it happens so often. I watch people switch around, bounce around, move offices, companies, industries, whatever, jobs, jobs yeah. because they sit there and they get uncomfortable with what they're in. Right. And then they're just like, ah, oh, this is hard. I had a guy, he's like, I get hit up all the freaking time. Sure. We're talking about this every day. Hey, Sam, I'm looking at this industry. Or if you were to go do an industry, what would you do? Or I want to switch companies. Like, where should I go? And I'm like, I, I simply ask him, I'm like, well, first off, are you sucking where you're at? Like, like, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, right. like you're going to suck wherever I send you. So yeah. because you can't change the mindset of right. just buying into where you're at. Be all in, man. Be all in. Like, That's just. It. Commit, put your head down. I love that. Don't pull your head up for 12 months and then see what happens. And at that point, you're sitting there going, oh, okay, I got it. Yeah, and if you if you reevaluate at that point, it's like, that's fine. I picked that date 12 months ago and so yeah. I'm going to take a week or whatever and reevaluate where I'm at. Am I making the money? Am mm-hmm. I in the right industry? Am I in the right job? Whatever. But like you gave it 100%. Yeah. And when you hit those walls, it, you just knocked through them. Like you just knocked them over. You didn't, you didn't back off or, or go do something else, you know? I love that. And it's like those that fast forward, because I'm sure over the last 10 years, you've had years where you're probably like, man, I can only do this one more year. I'm going to do this for, sure. you know, I'm, I'm moving to another job. Like, you know what I mean? I, am I right? Like, have you ever had those thoughts of like, um, yeah, you know, I think it's interesting because I, we were talking earlier about, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm a very good salesperson. I think I'm ultra consistent work wise and work ethic it's like i'm five to six days a week six to eight hours a day and i'm i'm there you know and so i i actually don't i don't feel that a lot like a one more year type thing because i've found a rhythm and i'm committed to my vision like i know in five years i'll never have to work again and i'm happy to do this like this is dude we're, we're outside knocking doors talking to people in the sun like it's not a hard job it really it's isn't. it's only hard if you make it hard. I, I was telling somebody the other day, like I was watching this guy nailing roofs and I'm like That's a hard job. Yeah, I'm like, I don't want to be up there hammering freaking yep. on a roof and maybe falling off. Physical labor is a yeah, hard job. I'm like, that sucks. Right. I don't have it sucky. He's probably looking at me going, I could never do that. If I'm this like, it, just one more thing before we wrap up. If this is a hard job for you, it's because you you're not all in, you're not hundred percent yes. committed, and you're making too many decisions each day and each week and it's causing you mental fatigue i know no matter what when it's 1 p.m i know where i am every day it doesn't matter I've, and i've i have this rhythm saturday morning at 9 a.m guess what i'm at an appointment every saturday at 9 a.m there's no decision like i don't have decision fatigue because at the beginning of every week mm-hmm. i make my schedule i know about the hours i'm going to work every week for the next five years i'm good with that no, I get- and then sunday i plan it and there's no, there's literally no decisions. Like my alarm goes off at five thirty, I'm gonna wake up. You know what I mean? It's not like should I wake up today or not? It's like yeah. no, I already said it. I wake up at five thirty every day. One p.m. I'm on the doors. It, it's just it, there's no decision to be made, and so you don't get tired I because love that. that that's why you get tired. If you're exhausted, decision it's decision fatigue. Because if you're wondering every day if you should go knock a door, by the time you even knock a door, it's two p.m. or three p.m. or four p.m. You're exhausted already because you're like. You're battling your brain, with yourself. Yeah, your brain got tired. And you, we've all been there. I hundred percent. Right? You're like, oh, I don't want to. I didn't know how to work today. I didn't know how you called it. I love it. Decision fatigue done. Write it down. I mean, right. that's just a real thing. Well, dude, I appreciate you just being on the show. Like, this has been awesome. And if you didn't get any nuggets from this, shame on you. If you made it to the end of the podcast, share this with your friends, your family. Tag Mike. Tag DD Podcast. And uh, dude, pleasure. That's hey, awesome. Appreciate you, man. Bye. Yeah. Much love. Yeah.